away from generalities and look to specifics. We're going to switch now to a demonstration from Clayton Weimer on how to develop software for Penpoint. There are a number of Penpoint development environments. Clayton's going to show one of them to us right now. So let's turn it over to Clayton. What do you have? Well, I have uh, three different various levels of uh, Pinpoint development tools to my, uh, at my access. And I'd like to show you one, the highest level one, called Magic Script. Let's go to the screen, though. This next slide, that is. <laughs> Again, a little bit about the professional uh, uh, SDK environment for Pinpoint. As David said, you have a cross-development environment. You're, develop you're compiling, you're editing C files on the DOS machine, and then you're downloading onto a target system. In this case, the EO. Well, that looks like a 440 to me. And then you're also debugging cross the environments. So you would be uh, stepping through your debugger or doing all the kinds of wonderful things you do in a debugger on the host side, which is the DOS, and stepping through your application uh, that's running on the target EO system. So the debugger is hosted on the PC side and it's communicating with the application under test, which is actually living on the target side. That's correct, okay. yes. And it's a, it's a, it's it's a very long uh, life cycle. You have to download, you have to step through, you have to uh, re-edit your C code, you have to uh, compile. But it is powerful, and you're not actually working at just a C level. You're working at an object-oriented level. You're working with 150 object-oriented classes, that is. And uh, it's really a matter of learning how to reuse those classes that uh, EO Corporation gives you in order to be successful. And the, the typical learning curve is about two to three months in mm -hmm. getting to be uh, productive on the system. Let me show you a, a higher level application, one that itself was written using the SDK before users who want to develop quickly applications uh, in a matter of hours or days. And I'm going to try to develop an app in four minutes here. So. <laughs> Uh, what we see here is a spreadsheet-like application with its various cells and the amount. And as you enter items here, it will total it down, to, down here. Now, I'd like to show you another application that I have, which is probably an easier way of entering this kind of expense data. And this is the expense report, and I could actually enter the different items uh, uh, directly into the expense report. And like was said earlier, you could copy paper forms, put it on the computer, and enter, them, enter data as if it was just like a paper form. But really, with a pen computer, you'd like to make it a little faster. So we have something called an expense chit, which uh, is something to be used by the mobile professional. Say he's in a cab and he's paying, uh, he pays his cab driver something, and you know, f six bucks or 16 bucks or 50 bucks if you're in New York. And then he would uh, enter that data. Now the goal is to get that data over to here and continually add the amount to his expense report. Well, because this is a lot easier to enter data for. So how do we do that? Let's show you. Uh, a quick way, and I'm going to use something called Pin Magic from, uh, I mean, Magic Script from Pin Magic Corporation. Copy a Magic Script button over here. Let's bring it up. And what I see is a palette showing an empty Magic Scripts session here. A begin and end and stop. When a Magic Script is running, you can, the user can stop it. So if I draw lines between buttons, what I'm doing is managing the control flow of the program. Now, if I run Magic Script right now, it's not going to do anything expense, uh, exciting. It just does nothing. So let's do something a little bit more exciting. Let's add a data entry in there. I would like it to prompt the user for something. Now, what I, in this case, I like the amount. to be prompted for, and go to that. So let's test it out. Pops up a little uh, insertion pad, 3-3. Three, three. OK, and there we go. Well, what I really want is that amount to be sent over there onto the expense report. So let's create a post button. 
And that, what I'm bringing up each time, is a palette of all these magic script buttons that have the intelligence for the various functionalities I'll need. So let's look at the options there. I'm going to delete this entry here. Let's create a, what, what is known as a Presto link. I want to post the amount to here. Presto link over there. All right. Okay. Uh, now, you're going to trust me for a second that that's going to work because I want to do something even more dangerous. I'm going to add a little prompt here. And I want that prompt to ask the user if he has any more expenses. So we'll circle that, line it out. More. Let's uh, say yay. And then no. OK. All right, so I want that button, after it posts the uh, data to the expense report, prompt the user. And if it's no, end it in the session. If it's yes, start over again. OK, let's give it a shot. 33.67 cents. OK, any more? Nah. Now you notice here it posted that amount up on the expense report. So the idea is to keep adding to the behavior here and of course you'd want to have the description and date and there's all kinds of functionalities I could add and it really uh, improves the turnover time and like you said before you want to have user feedback immediately with pin computing because the most important part of pin computing is the interaction with users who are not quite computer sophisticated like uh, we're used to. It would seem like that kind of an application would be appropriate both for developing some programs but also for doing rapid prototyping where you might have mock-ups because the actual say data communications links might not be there yet they're being coded in C by programmers who are well versed in that but you'd use this to mock up something and do your user testing in parallel with the development of the real system. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I would uh, use this uh, right away because I can take my pin computer over to the user's or customer's site and I can actually develop an application with him right next to me and uh, get that immediate feedback while we're going. And there's no tedious compile, edit, download cycle onto the target computer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's right immediate. Uh, you can really uh, uh, go a long way with this uh, development environment. And I look forward to uh, even more advanced versions of this coming out. The other thing I'd like to point out is, uh, again, even the, this new development environment shows the uniqueness of pin computing in itself, uh, as you can see with the go-to buttons, and it gives you a visual programming style, uh, unlike uh, you would normally be used to on other uh, desktop-type systems and such. No. Magic Script is a set of tools from a company that sells development tools for PenPoint. Can I use Magic Script programs to communicate between other programs in PenPoint? Can it talk to other programs? Uh, PinMagic has a, an SDK that's available to allow you to h create the hooks you need to, uh, from the SDK components that you create into Pin Magic, Magic Script type components. So yes, so that, that's doable. That lets me link then the magic script that you've shown us here to conventional C code yes. in my own program. Okay, wow, with this I could uh, almost get my long-awaited uh, long dream of developing code at the beach with an EO. <laughs>